Hello everybody. Today we have a lecture about Crowley disease. Doctor what is the Crowley disease? Crowley disease is a congenital disorder characterized by multifocal, segmental dilatation of large intrahepatic bile ducts. The condition is usually associated with renal cystic disease of varying severity. Crowley initially described two variants, which has led to some confusion in terminology. Crowley disease is the less common form and is characterized by bioductular ectasia without other apparent hepatic abnormalities. The more common variant is Crowley syndrome, in which bioduct dilatation is associated with congenital hepatic fibrosis. Crowley disease and syndrome have been described in the same family. Most cases are transmitted in an autosomal recessive fashion and are associated with autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease ARPD. There have been rare cases occurring with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Doctor what about pathogenesis? The molecular pathogenesis of Crowley disease and syndrome is incompletely understood. The gene underlying ARP had been mapped to chromosome 6, 6P21-P12. The affected gene, called PKHD1 for polycystic kidney and hepatic disease 1, encodes for large protein 4074 amino acids which has been called fibrocystin to reflect the main structural abnormalities in liver and kidney. The protein shares structural features with the hepatocyte growth factor receptor, localizes to cilia, and appears to belong to a superfamily of proteins that are involved in the regulation of cell proliferation and of cellular adhesion and repulsion. It does not share any homology with the proteins responsible for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. PKHD1 is expressed primarily in the kidneys with lower levels in liver, pancreas, and lungs, a pattern consistent with phenotype of the disease, which primarily affects the liver and kidneys. The genetic basis for the difference in Crowley disease and syndrome has not been defined. Doctor what about the pathology? In both Crowley disease and Crowley syndrome, the biliary abnormality consists of segmental, saccular dilatations of the large intrahepatic bile ducts. While the segmental bile ducts are predominantly involved, the dilated portions are in continuity with the rest of the biliary tract. The disease may be limited to one lobe of the liver, most commonly the left lobe. The dilated ducts are lined by biliary epithelium that may be hyperplastic and ulcerated. In Crowley syndrome, the liver also shows features of congenital hepatic fibrosis CHF, including fibrosis and enlargement of portal tracts which often contain variable numbers of abnormally shaped bile ducts and hypoplastic portal vein branches. The pathogenesis of the intrahepatic ductal dilatation and hepatic fibrosis appears to be related to an arrest or derangement in remodeling of the ductal plate of the larger intrahepatic bile ducts during development. One group proposed that the genetic abnormality leading to abnormal remodeling of the ductal plate can exert its influence during an early period of bile duct embryogenesis, leading to Crowley disease, or later on producing abnormalities in the peripheral biliary ramifications, the intralobular bile ducts, leading to Crowley syndrome. Doctor, what are the clinical manifestations? The clinical manifestations of Crowley syndrome are related both to the biliary abnormalities and portal hypertension from congenital hepatic fibrosis. There are several modes of presentation depending on the age of onset and the predominance of hepatic or renal involvement. ARP frequently presents in neonates and can even be detected in utero, although age at presentation is highly variable since presenting symptoms have been reported in adults, portal hypertension or cholangitis, or neonates with renal disease or cholestasis. In both Crowley disease and Crowley syndrome, the saccular or fusiform dilatation of bile ducts predisposes to stagnation of bile leading to the formation of biliary sludge and intraductal lithiasis. Bacterial cholangitis occurs frequently and may be complicated by septicemia and hepatic abscess formation. Secondary biliary cirrhosis can occur due to biliary obstruction. Patients with Crowley syndrome can present with portal hypertension and its cicli, such as oschitz and esophageal variceal hemorrhage. Other patients present only with intermittent abdominal pain. Pruritus and hepatomegaly are common. Children with Crowley syndrome usually have an earlier onset of symptoms and a more rapidly progressive disease because of the combined effects of cholangitis and portal hypertension. 
On physical examination, the liver is frequently enlarged and the spleen becomes palpable as portal hypertension develops. Patients with renal involvement may also have enlarged kidneys, which may be palpable. Laboratory studies typically show an elevation of serum alkaline phosphatus, direct bilirubin, and a leukocytosis with a predominance of neutrophiles. Hepatic synthetic function is well preserved initially, but may be affected by progressive liver damage due to recurrent cholangitis and biliary obstruction. Coagulopathy from vitamin K malabsorption may occur in cholestatic patients. Children presenting with ARP should be followed closely for evidence of liver disease. Juvenile nephinophthisis and medullary cystic disease have been observed, although they are probably rare. Doctor, what about the diagnosis? The diagnosis of Crowley disease and Crowley syndrome is established by imaging studies that demonstrate bile duct ectasia and irregular cystic dilation of the large proximal intrahepatic bile ducts with a normal common bile duct. These findings can be seen readily with ultrasonography, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, and magnetic resonance cholangiography. The so-called central dot sign, defined as a small foci of strong contrast enhancement within dilated intrahepatic ducts, is often found on Connecticut or MRI imaging. Imaging studies can also demonstrate the renal features of ARB. A liver biopsy is rarely required to make a diagnosis. When obtained in Crowley syndrome, it typically shows broad bands of mature fibrosis tissue and distorted bile duct structures characteristic of congenital hepatic fibrosis. There may also be hypoplasia of the portal vein branches. An acute and chronic inflammatory cell infiltrate may be seen around the dilated bile ducts. In Crowley disease, there is only ectasia of the larger intrahepatic ducts. Liver biopsy may show features of cholangitis. Doctor, what about the differential diagnosis? There may be some confusion with extrahepatic chelidochal cysts, one form of which can extend into the intrahepatic bile ducts, type V chelidochal cysts. However, chelidochal cysts are not a form of Crowley disease. Rare cases of Crowley syndrome have been associated with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease in which irregularly sized cysts are distributed throughout the kidney with frequent progression of the cysts with age. Doctor, what about the treatment? Treatment is largely supportive and should be individualized. Cholangitis and sepsis should be treated with appropriate antibiotics and biliary stone extraction whenever feasible. Because of bile stasis in the presence of intrahepatic lithiasis, infection may be particularly difficult to eradicate and can be associated with progressive deterioration of liver function. Patients may require prolonged courses of antibiotics. Patients with chronic cholestasis should receive supplements of fat-soluble vitamins. Patients who have developed esophageal varices should receive prophylaxis with a non-selective beta blocker. A selective shunting procedure can provide relief from portal hypertension since liver function may be well preserved. Otherwise unexplained clinical deterioration or the appearance of a new biliary stricture should raise concern that cholangiocarcinoma has developed. Whether patients should undergo surveillance for cholangiocarcinoma is unclear. Endoscopic sphincterotomy and stone extraction can be used to remove common duct stones. In contrast, the extraction of intrahepatic stones is far more difficult. In one study, endoscopic sphincterotomy followed by either extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy or intraductal electrohydraulic lithotripsy was successful in clearing intrahepatic stones in four of six adults and partially in another two. Peroral cholangioscopy using a mother-daughter endoscope system was successful in 23 of 36 patients, 60%. In another report of patients with hepatolithiasis, long-term follow-up of these patients suggests that, that stone clearance can be durable. Laser lithotripsy appears to have a more limited role for intrahepatic stones, and is not widely available. Dissolution therapy using synthetic biosalts has also been described. In one of the largest series, for example, Ursodeoxycholic acid, 10 to 20 mg slash kilograms per day for a mean of 48 months, was associated with complete dissolution of intrahepatic stones in three patients and partial dissolution in another nine. Ursodeoxycholic acid works probably by increasing bile flow and decreasing bile stasis rather than by dissolving the stones, since most stones are pigmented. Removal of intrahepatic stones by surgery is usually not feasible. However, Partial hepatectomy may be curative in rare patients in whom the disease is confined to a single lobe of the liver. Patients who have recurrent bouts of biliary infection, 
particularly those who also have complications related to portal hypertension, may require liver transplantation. A study of 140 patients with Crowley disease or syndrome based on UNO's data transplanted between 1987 and 2011 showed excellent patient and graft survival that was comparable to or better than that of patients transplanted for other disease. Doctor what about the prognosis? The prognosis is variable depending upon the severity of disease and the presence of coexisting renal dysfunction. Recurrent infections and other complications related to biliary lithiasis can be associated with significant morbidity. Liver transplantation may be the only option in patients with refractory disease. The risk of Cholangiac carcinoma is increased up to 7%, probably due to the significant bile stasis and the presence of high concentrations of unconjugated secondary bile salts. Amyloidosis has also been described due to the inflammation from chronic or recurrent cholangitis. Doctor can you tell us the summary and recommendations? Crowley disease is characterized by bile ductular ectasia without other apparent hepatic abnormalities. By contrast, Crowley syndrome is characterized by bile ductal ectation associated with congenital hepatic fibrosis. Crowley syndrome is more common than Crowley disease. The molecular pathogenesis of Crowley disease and syndrome is incompletely understood. Most cases are transmitted in an autosomal recessive fashion and are associated with autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease ARPD. The clinical manifestations of Crowley syndrome are related both to the biliary abnormalities and portal hypertension from congenital hepatic fibrosis. There are several modes of presentation depending on the age of onset and the predominance of hepatic or renal involvement. Bacterial cholangitis occurs frequently and may be complicated by septicemia and hepatic abscess formation. Secondary biliary cirrhosis can occur due to biliary obstruction. The diagnosis of Crowley disease and Crowley syndrome is established by imaging studies that demonstrate bile duct ectasia and irregular, cystic dilation of the large proximal intrahepatic bile ducts with a normal common bile duct. These findings can be seen readily with ultrasonography, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, and magnetic resonance cholangiography. Treatment is largely supportive and should be individualized. The prognosis is variable depending upon the severity of disease and the presence of coexisting renal dysfunction. Thank you Dr. Eight for excellent presentation. Thanks Doctor. Thanks. For watching this lecture. Please do not forget to like and share the video subscribe to our YouTube channel number one doctor. Follow us on social media accounts in the description below the video. Hope to see you again in more next videos. With my best witches. Dr. 8 Fomid.